this is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. We're getting more conflicting reports about what's happening with Tesla in China. A couple of days ago, Bloomberg reported that Tesla would cut Model Y production at its assembly plant in Shanghai by 20%. Then Tesla said that report was untrue. But today, Bloomberg reports that Tesla will cut two hours from both the shifts at that plant. As we went to press, Tesla had not yet issued any comment. Those shifts were running for 11 and a half hours a day, but now they'll reportedly run at nine and a half. Bloomberg also says that Tesla is telling new hires that their start date will be pushed back to next year so they don't need to report for work right now. Tesla wholesaled a record 100,000 Model 3s and Ys in China last month, but there are reports that inventory is starting to pile up and the company has cut prices by several thousand dollars. And it just offered another $860 discount to Chinese customers who take delivery this month. And this is crazy. The more safety equipment that goes into vehicles, the more people are getting killed in traffic accidents. About 43,000 people were killed in the U.S. last year. So the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, or IIHS, is proposing that states take action. It wants them to lower speed limits. It wants better police enforcement of those limits, including more cameras to catch speeders. It wants speed limiters on passenger vehicles, like some commercial vehicle fleets have. And then it wants narrower lanes and more speed bumps. So what do you think? Are these the kinds of measures that will lead to fewer traffic accidents? We know some things about the Cadillac Celestic. We know it will cost over $300,000. We know that it will be hand-built, and we know it's going to pioneer new manufacturing techniques. But we want more, and we're going to get that chance this afternoon when Tony Roma, the chief engineer of the Celestic, will join us for AutoLine After Hours when we go live at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Frank Marcus from Motor Trend and Richard Truitt from Automotive News will also be on the show. And if you've got questions you'd like us to ask Tony Roma, leave them in the comments section or send an email to viewermail at autoline.tv. We want to know what drives your testing? OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Honda is getting a boatload of batteries from CATL. Most of the new battery plants being announced, they're able to produce somewhere around 30 to 40 gigawatt hours a year. Honda's new deal with CATL is for 123 gigawatt hours of batteries. That's for a seven year period from 2024 until 2030 and will likely be enough to power millions of EVs. The batteries will be made in China, so they'll likely also be used in the EVs that Honda offers in China. It plans to offer 10 EVs in its EN series of vehicles by 2027 and already has a couple on sale, like the ENS1 and EMP1, which feature a roughly 70 kilowatt hour battery pack, and the recently announced EN2 sedan. And speaking of Honda and EVs, it's launching an electric version of its N van in Japan. The current version of the van, which is offered as both a passenger and commercial model, went on sale in 2018 and is highlighted by a large side opening, thanks to no B pillar. Honda's not releasing a whole lot of details on the electric version, but says it's aiming for 200 kilometers, or roughly 124 miles of range. And to make it more attractive to customers, it's charging the same price as the gasoline model, a million yen, or roughly $7,300. Japanese automakers have got to be worried about Chinese brands like BYD entering their home market with EVs since they don't have many to offer. But maybe this is a way for them to compete quickly by electrifying their K-car fleets and selling them at an affordable price. Corvette is not the only sub-brand that GM is going to spin off, according to Car and Driver. 
Citing a source from inside GM, it says that Escalade and Camaro are also being considered for their own brands due to their success as individual products. As you would expect, there's talk of crossovers and SUVs, but there's also a rumor of a Cadillac minivan for China as well. Buick makes a super luxurious van called the GL8 in China, so it is something that their customers are interested in. And if it all does happen, some of those vehicles still might feature an internal combustion engine. GM President Mark Royce says, quote, the ice age is not over and that it will not leave segments where ICE still dominate. Royce mainly focused on trucks, but large crossovers and SUVs certainly fall in that category as well. And we hear that GM will even offer plug-in hybrids in certain markets like South America. At Scheffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. Battery electric medium-duty trucks are cheaper to operate than diesels, but it depends on the application. That's one of the things we learned at the SAE's North American International Propulsion Conference last month. Battery-powered medium-duty trucks that have a 2-300 to 300 mile range and recharge with electricity that costs 12 cents per kilowatt hour will have a lower total cost of ownership after 2-3 to three years of operation and fleet operators have a laser focus on TCO, or total cost of ownership, so this should boost sales of electric trucks. The SAE's NAIPC follows Chatham House rules. That means we can report what we heard at the conference, but we cannot say who said it or what company they work for. But we can tell you that this report comes from one of the biggest truck manufacturers in the world. Chinese EV startups are growing fast, including in the luxury segment, and that's hurting foreign automakers, especially the German premium brands. And BMW has been lagging with EVs in China, but that will change next year. It's going to have 11 BEVs up from just five today. And this includes the iX1 model, which will be the brand's third China-made model, as well as the Rolls-Royce Spectre and the BMW Motorrad CEO4 electric scooter. When those models hit the market, BMW claims it will have the most complete electric lineup amongst all the luxury brands in China. While European automakers are complaining about their EVs not qualifying for subsidies from the Inflation Reduction Act, the Koreans aren't sitting on their hands. The Hyundai Group is building manufacturing plants in the U.S. so it can qualify for the EV tax credits. It officially announced it will build an EV battery factory in Georgia in partnership with SK On. That plant will open in 2025, just one year after the IRA starts handing out subsidies for EVs assembled in North America with batteries made in the USA. And that's a wrap for today. Thanks for making AutoLine a part of your day. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.